Hey, Shalom. Uh, all praise unto Yahweh Hashem, Yahweh Hashem, and Kakadash. Double honors unto the apostles of, of Great Millstone and honors your brothers that be pushing this truth in sincerity throughout the four corners of the earth. So this is going to be a quick video, uh, something that I've been um, uh, thinking about and stewing up uh, on uh, for for a little while. Um, you know, for a couple of maybe maybe the whole of today, I've been thinking about this particular topic. And uh, anybody that knows me knows that I love to study. Um, psychology and learn the ins and outs of how um you know social uh infrastructures are formed and uh the mechanics of how they fall apart how they grow and uh today you know one of the things that i, I had um searched on or uh, had uh, come to understand and it's a quote from aristotle and I've, if i'm not mistaken the apostles did say aristotle was an uh was a jake was an israelite and that would make sense because, you know, his uh, his works are still looked at today uh, in high esteem. And one of the things that he mentioned, which leads me into the point of this video, which is to um to to love your brother, man, learn to love your brother. I suppose will be the run through uh, premise of this video. Uh, one of the uh, things that he had mentioned was, uh, you have a situation where many. Um, many, uh, many concepts, uh, is that the right word? We can use the word concepts. Many uh, 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 reasons lead to a relationship forming. All right. Sometimes you have a relationship where it's mutually beneficial. And sometimes you have a relationship where uh, it happens, um, you know, spontaneously. And he listed out three examples of how those relationships form. But one of, and he was using the example of men and women and, you know, friendship. He was using the example of friendship. And, um, and and you know it struck me uh, it, you know it struck me uh, quite clearly um, when he mentioned the strongest bond that you can possibly create with another human being is one where you have shared values. Now you can already see where I'm going to go with it, with that within this particular video because the greatest bond you're supposed to have is with the men around you. Now let me be vividly clear in what I'm going to say next. When we have, when we say we've got common goals, that's not a thing of we have common goals in words. Okay, we don't just say the things or preach, you know, the things that we go out there on the streets and, and speak about. We got to walk in that particular path to the best of our ability. And if you have an individual that is speaking in a particular way and he's not um, walking in that particular way, then certainly uh, something has to be done about that. So going back onto the quote that Aristotle had made, he made the uh, statement that, you know, you pretty much you get a bond, a strong bond between uh, you and another human being when you have shared values. And as you grow within this faith, this word, this understanding that Yahab HaShem HaShai, whom the world calls God and, and, and Christ, have come to save the children of Israel. And you go out there with brothers and you teach this to the 12 tribes of Israel, as it says within the book of Isaiah, the 58th chapter, cry aloud, spare not, lift out thy voice like a trumpet, show my people their transgressions. As you do that particular task, as you express your values, your internal values, and you exhibit them on a public stage with brethren around you, the bond that's supposed to be within you and between you is supposed to be unbreakable. Now, of course, of course, there's going to be outliers, there's going to be diversities of spirits, there's going to be uh, clashes, but the bond is supposed to be unbreakable and therefore the bond must needs be maintained, recognized and uh, embraced. And most of all, uh, you got to be grateful for that particular bond because once you come within the circle of the understanding of truth, there's a, a, a great chance that you're going to make it on a chariot when your Shai, Shai returns returns to deliver his people, the children of Israel, from the captivity that we're in right now underneath the man Esau. So let me repeat that again. The bond you're supposed to be ha having with brothers, man, that's a thing to be cherished. Okay, that is a blessing from the from on high. That's a blessing from Yahab Hashim Al Shai. And it's supposed to be a strong bond that you have between those those people. Now let's let's take it deeper onto the script onto the spiritual level. The values that you have on of your own. Those values have been given unto you by Yahab HaShem Shai. The scripture says that faith is a gift from Yahab HaShem Shai. So if faith is a gift from Yahab HaShem Shai, the belief within this word, therefore the bond that you have within this brotherhood is a gift from the Heavenly Father. Therefore it is necessary 
that when your brother offends you, that you willingly forgive him. And like Yahweh Shai said, you said you're supposed to give him an infinite amount of times, man, provided that brother is working within the confines of the doctrine. All right. When things happen that's outside of the doctrine, it's going to be raised up onto the appropriate individuals with the appropriate seating amongst the congregation of Israel. So the first scripture that I've got here is the book of Luke 17 and 3. And it says, take heed to yourselves that if thy brother trespass against thee, rebuke him. And if he, if, if he repent, then he, you forgive him, man. Because that bond is a sacred bond. Obviously, if that brother doesn't repent, then guess what? Those values that combine you into a, a, a social group or a spiritual group, which would be a better statement, those values are broken. Now you have a situation where councils is going to be uh, uh, taken. But most situations between brothers could be just fixed with both parties saying, Council like here, you know, maybe I don't necessarily agree with what you're saying right now. Let me sleep upon it. Because as you grow within these faith, these things that, hey, when we came into this truth, the scripture talks about how the, the word of the Heavenly Father cuts you, man. When we came into this truth, we got cut, man. By, by, but by process of time, you came into the understanding that what? That there are deeper things to what's being said within the scriptures. And you came to the understanding, although it cut you in, in at the beginning, really it's a nothingness. And that's the same thing with particular uh, um, frictions that might happen between brothers, man. You, it might offend you at, at the beginning what's being said or what's being experienced or however the situation may be. But laws will over the course of time. You know, you're going to come to an understanding. And and, and the elder Yashabamba says it all the time, man. Most things could be just fixed with Salakia. Let me just think upon it, man. Salakia, you know, I don't, I, you know, I don't agree per se, but let me, let me think on it. And provided you are working within the confines of the spirit, hey, over time, you might come to the same conclusion that that one individual may or may not have. Okay, so let's read that scripture again. The book of Luke 17 and 3. Take heed to yourselves. If thy brother trespass against thee, rebuke him. You're supposed to rebuke individuals, man. You've got individuals that can't take rebuke. That's not a spiritual mindset, man. That's not a spiritual mindset. You've got individuals that love to disrebuke and they don't take rebuke. You've got you to gotta give and take, man. All right, we're, we're all working it out. And as you're going to see, as I build up this picture of this particular video, you're going to see the important thing to always consider. And I'll spoil it for you. The most important thing to consider is that, that the creature has been made subject unto vanity. This body, these vessels that we're in, we want to do righteousness on the inside. Our spirit wants to do righteousness. But ultimately, the flesh, which is made corruptible, has it to where we go off. That is to say, the sin within us makes us sin. But if a man be a man of the Lord, it doesn't matter what iniquity he commits, of which the scripture talks about the only iniquity that can't be forgiven is the blasphemy of the spirit. And only Esau can blaspheme within the spirit, man. So when you take a, when you look at it, man, you got to look at a brother and you got to think, OK, this brother is not in their perfected form. And that is to say we're going to be changed. But also, too, one thing they say in psychology is if you're pointing the finger, man, there's four fingers pointing at you. And that is to say three fingers pointing at you that is to say that you are not perfect and you too shall be changed so you got to work with brothers man provided that individual re 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 repents they take the rebuke and they repent let's go to the next scripture uh this is um the book of first corinthians 15 and 52 in a moment in the twinkling of an eye at the last trump i suppose this is the last precept um because i think the other one that i had doesn't quite match up with what i'm trying to achieve in this particular video so this is going to be this is going to be good this 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 will work as a as a closing out scripture because it combines all the ideas that we had into one simple simple idea we're not perfect the heavenly father is going to make us perfect therefore forgive so you can be forgiven and also forgive because the 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 their greater enemies that we have against us man <laughs> we are all that we have in a moment in the twinkling of an eye at the last trump as provide forgive a brother provided he repents that is okay provided he repents in a moment in the twinkling of an eye at the last trump for the trumpet I uh let me read that again I'm gonna read that all right uh first Corinthians fifteen and fifteen and fifty one behold 
I show you a mystery. We shall not all sleep, but we shall all be changed. The all the 12 tribes of Israel is going to be perfected, man. Now the nations are going to have the corruptible bodies, and we're going to be the judges ab above those nations administering judgments unto those nations, man. We're going to be jacking them up when they go off. But because we're going to be righteous kings, they're not going to want to go off. Because they're going to see the benefits of following the law, statutes, commandments of the heavenly father that we, the kings and the priests of the earth, are going to give unto them. But we, the priests and the kings of the earth, are going to be perfect in keeping those laws. Because as the scripture says within the book of Hebrews, the eighth chapter and the eighth verse, we're going to be having the law, statutes, commandments of the heavenly father within our minds, programmed to do it instinctive, like a lion knows how to chase deer by instinct. We're going to know how to keep the laws of the Heavenly Father by instinct because we're going to be changed. We're going to be better, man. We're going to be better. So if we're not our, our, at our best right now, or you just do your best to try and see a brother in his good light, work with a brother within his good light. <laughs> right? Because some situations ain't for everybody. There's some situations you can't necessarily be around a brother for. It might offend you. But that doesn't mean to say that's not your brother. <laughs> you just work with a brother, man. All right. In the moment, in the twinkling of an eye, at the last trump, for the trump shall sound and the dead shall be raised incorruptible. And we shall be changed, man. Until we get changed and until we get perfected, there's going to be situations that's going to be offensive. Situations that are going to call for rebuke. Situations that are going to call for repentance. Provided the brother repents, there's no need that the bond between the brotherhood is broken all right and that's the video so with that i'm gonna say all praises unto you double honors unto the apostles of great millstone and honestly brothers that be pushing this truth in sincerity Shalom.